packages in. You're good to go. On my way. <laughs> Yoo-hoo, the skylight's still closed. I could be out dancing or robbing a 7-Eleven like normal people. Picky, picky. Just give me a sec. Anything new? No, it's as stale as this coffee. Make a new pot. I'll take the helm. I wonder if this thing gets Oprah. I'm in. Cheer up, Deeds. Try to enjoy your work. Or at least do it faster. How long? 60 seconds or a minute. Whichever comes first. It's just a fashion thing. I hate to get little shards of glass all over my outfit. I'm trying, I'm trying. Hey, Shane. Can you see our house from there? All I can see is my life flashing before my eyes. Deeds, how we come with the window? I'm on it. Just 10 more seconds, so you can drop in on us, Shane. That girl, you're on. Anything interesting? Nah, all reruns. I'm gonna go on break. Okay. This is vaguely erotic. Someone's going down. Time to kick some butt. This thong is killing me. There it is. You're gonna use C4? I don't know, what do you suggest? The power of friendship? Mary Tyler Moore and some guy who taught his parrot how to read. I taped it if you want to see it. Yeah, thanks. Oh, you think Shane saw that? She saw it. like that could give a girl baton envy. Okay, okay, 
you in. Pull me up. You kidnapped a girl. Now, what makes you think you're going anywhere but dead? What, are you kidding me? Oh, no. Doesn't look like she's kidding you. I don't think she's kidding. Tell me something. Did you really hit that girl back there? Yeah, I, I hit her. And um, I'm really sorry. Could you, could you please pull me up? Because I'm slipping. No, no, you're not slipping. Oh, I'm letting you go. What? I never get tired of this part. Who wants sushi? There are three career criminals with one shot at freedom. Now they're working for the feds who put them away. These are the women of She Spies. Bad girls gone good. kidnapped a young girl. Who he hit? Ask me, boy got what he deserved. I'm not asking. Besides, I don't make the rules the chairman does, but unlike you three, I follow them. Oh, besides bouncing the bad guy, name one other thing we did wrong. For starters, this is the third time you've lost company vehicles. Lost? No, I left it in the wall of that building where you could find it. That building was a museum. You also destroyed two Picassos and a Moreau. Do you have something against art? I don't know. What do you paint? And you, young lady, you might be a little too good with your computer hat. I was just doing my job. Your job was to break into airline manifest records, not to also zap a million frequent flyer miles to the county children's orphanage. Orphans like to travel, too. Was that so wrong? Hey, then you. You've really done it this time. You know, I thought all those years of being a convict would cure you of being a con woman. You cured me of ever wearing gray again. So I ran up a few credit cards and designer clothes. What's the big deal? It was $12,000, and they were my credit cards. I know what's bothering you. The chairman beat you up again, didn't he? Does it beat me up? Come on, Jack. Every time he drops the hammer, you go to the blue suit that makes your butt look cute. Which you think makes you look more official. That's not true. No, he's right. His butt looks saggy in the blues. It's not my butt you should be worried about. It's yours. And you keep, you keep screwing around, we're all going to end up back in prison. Now, can we please get to work? Meet Micah and Leo Dvornak. They're a couple of notorious Beverly Hills playboys who for years have been collecting millions for their charity, the Dvornak Disabled Children's Hospital. In reality, they've been stealing most of the money for themselves. It's sleaze like that that gives sleaze like us a bad name. Yeah, well, contact your union. Now, your job is to find and get your hands on the money, save the children's hospital, and expose the Dvornaks as fraudmeisters. Is fraudmeister a word? And we think they've been laundering the donation through the hospital. It's probably someone in the inside making the whole thing go down. Here's your cover, Dee Dee. Oh, nurse, cool. I love those white stockings. I love whatever you want. Just get in the hospital, fly under the radar, find what you can. How come she gets to be the nurse? Well, you think I trust either one of you to stick me with the needle? Would you trust me with the turn your head and cough thing? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> now, this weekend, the Dvorneks are holding their yearly fundraiser at their hotel. That's where you two are going. Uh, hotel, huh? I see minimum wage, something service-oriented. It gives you access. Just find out where they're keeping their stash and how to steal it back. Can I at least keep the tips? <sighs> Can we move on now? There's an inside man in the hotel, Joshua Bick, the concierge. Bick has an electronic card key to the entire hotel and screens targets for the Dvornax charity scheme. And let me guess, his favorite targets are lonely, rich widows and divorcees. Ah, which is what you've just become. Young, dumb, and wrong. Oh, 
<clears throat> May I help you? Oh, I pray. Someone can shed a little ray of sunlight on what's been one of the worst days of my life. Oh, I hope so too, Miss. Uh... Kerwood and its missus. Oh. First the G4 was late touching down, then my limo got a flat, and the hotel down the boulevard lost my reservation. I just can't imagine what could go wrong next. Whoa. Uh, whoa. <clears throat> whoa. Uh... <sighs> well, you look at that. Yes. Oh. Here we go. Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. This is yours. I'd be even a little better if you tell me your presidential suite is available. I'll pay cash. We take cash. <laughs> oh, one more thing. There was a homeless gentleman out front. Would you see to it he gets a meal, some new clothes, and a room for the night? On me? As my late husband always said, we are our brother's keepers. Of course. I'll be happy to see to it that the gentleman is well taken care of. Now, the elevator is right over there, Mrs. Kerwood, and I'll be right with you. Thank you. My pleasure. Mr. Duvorna. We got one. Thank you. We've got one. Time to go to work. They finally hired a new nurse around here. Mm, that obvious, huh? Squeaky shoes, new nurse. Do I know you? Never met a poster child before. And what a pretty poster girl you are. I guess pretty must be the word for the day. I'm Dr. Ellison. Paul. Wow. Are those all your real teeth? I mean, hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm Dee Dee. Can Dee Dee work on my wing? Oh, that's uh, up to Dr. Zerby, honey. Bye, Dee Dee. Bye. Amy's an orphan. She's lived here for years. Can't wait for the day she finally stands up and walks out of here. That was Dr. Zerby. Good morning. Good for some of us, perhaps. Now, I've been looking at your cost analysis, and with all this red ink, I see no justification for hiring a new nurse. Mm, that would be me. I'm Dee Dee. My justification is my patient's needs. Look, there has to be money here somewhere. Then dig deeper. Well, if you need help finding anything around here, just uh, give me a shout. Thanks, doctor. Paul, I'll let you know. Okay. <clears throat> Here's your drink, ma'am. Well, I didn't order a drink. It's on the house, you tight witch. Nice cover, but little there is. <sighs> You're one to talk. Did you find anything? Not yet, but this tray gives me the run of the place. Did you find the Dabornak brothers yet? Not looking. The best way to sucker a Mark is to let the Mark think he's suckering you. Miss Kerwood, my name is Micah Dvornak. This is my brother, Leo. Ma'am, we own the hotel. Enjoying your stay. It's a little stuffy, but what the hell, it's comfortable. Yes, well, we also wanted to tell you we heard of your generous act regarding the homeless man out front. Oh, did you take care of that fella? You can rest assured you won't be seeing him in that condition anymore. Always makes one feel blessed to take care of others. It's people like you that make the world a better place. Excuse me? Leo here. It's the accountants. Okay, listen, crunch the numbers, do something. We're not gonna stand by while the children's hospital closes down, okay? Get back to me. I better go speak to the board. Excuse me. Is there something wrong? 
My brother and I run a charity for physically challenged children. Unfortunately, some of our corporate sponsors pulled out for more important causes. Now, what could be more important than children in need? I don't know. Well, maybe I can help. Ten seconds. I'm almost on the computer, Jack. I'm waxing my legs, Jack. I have absolutely nothing to do, Jack. Get off the line. Okay. Not you, Dee Dee. I'm calling to complain about the Kung Pao chicken. I said mild. Wait, who was that? This isn't Hong Kong Palace? No. Will everyone please get off the line? Okay. Not you, Dee Dee. Here it comes. All Foundation's files are on one computer, port 1081, right here in the... Port 1081 is in a Dr. Zerby's office. I got company. Who's that? break into the computer room last night told me that all the charitable records were located in Dr. Zerby's desktop. At first, Dr. Z's financial records seemed completely normal until I took a backdoor entrance and found a very secret ledger that pointed to Zerby as the Dvornex insider. It looked like the old pigmeister had been siphoning off donations to buy diamonds. Where the diamonds go, I have no idea. <laughs> I think I do. All right, check it out. I downloaded shipping receipts from the diamond exchange. There are monthly deliveries that are brought straight to the Dvornex Hotel office suite. And that hole in the wall they call a safe should be easier to open than another Starbucks. As long as the Brothers Grimm aren't in there. I'm on them. It. I'm on it. Ms. Gordon from Social Services, please come to the nurse's station. Excuse me. Oh, Dr. Z. What were you doing in my office? Uh, Dee Dee, did you find the patient progress reports I asked you to look for? In Dr. Zerby's office? Uh, no, I couldn't find them. Hmm. Forgive my paranoia, but there was a break-in in the computer room last night. You didn't happen to see anything, did you, know? Couldn't. Wasn't there. What if you had been? And had walked in on one of your patients having an attack of cardiac arrhythmia. How much phenotabinol would you give them? Phenotabinol? Yes. I would give them none. Being an antihyperventilant, phenotabinol would make the attack worse, maybe even lead to cardiac arrest or death. I'd stabilize the patient with a thoracic massage and call a doctor for a proper diagnosis. Can't ask for a better nurse than that, doctor. Time will tell. Thanks for saving me. Anytime. Way to put the old fart in his place. Well, I gotta go back to being a doctor. Be a good one. He is a good one. It's nice to see him smile again. Again? Ever since his wife left him. Oh, why would a woman leave a man with an incredible smile like his? With all the weird stuff that happens around here, nothing surprises me. Mr. Pick. You're the new girl, aren't you? Guilty, but the new girl will be more careful next time. Well, I see no surprises here. 
Your charity sounds perfect for my taste. If it was up to me, I'd give you a cashier's check right now. But before they'd send it, the board had enough questions to make my head spin. You don't mind answering them for me, do you? There's nothing more important going on in this hotel tonight than answering your questions. That's the last of the board's questions. Leo here. I don't see a thing in the world standing in the way of making tonight a very successful evening for us all. We have a problem in the office. shadows can't bad hair day how you like a bad brain splattered on the wall day i don't know how would you like the girl kick my gun away and broke my nose day well how would you like it shut up I think he's having a heart attack. What is that? It's epinephrine. Start a bad heart. Or stop a good one. I can't sleep. Oh my gosh. Amy, it's okay. Is he... He's gone. Dee Dee, take Amy back to her room. I can take care of everything here. Okay. Something weird is going on here. First, a break in at the hospital. And now one here? They got him with an electronic card key. Mine is missing. Listen, we are stupid if we don't grab everything and take off now. Zerby's dead, too. Dead? Yeah. Dr. Z was getting a little greedy. So our person on the inside gave him a drug that induced a heart attack. Look, 
I'm not leaving Kerwood's money on the table. We go through with the fundraiser as planned. Then we get away after we get her check. Now, any idea who this intruder was? No, just that it was a woman. <laughs> a woman? Yeah. But a mean one. She broke my nose. that chair? Is that obvious? Squeaky wheels, old chair. I've had it ever since I've been here. Ever since I've known Dr. Zerby. Amy, yesterday you said things were weird around here. What did you mean by that? Well, I... Young lady, fundraiser is tomorrow. You need your rest. Dr. Ellison, Dr. Zerby was going to take me to the fundraiser, but now that he's dead, I was wondering, could Dee Dee take me instead, please? Well, of course she can, Amy. I wanted her to be there anyhow. I can't believe a guy with a smile as perfect as Dr. Ellison's is ripping off disabled children. Not to mention a killer. Well, your Dr. Ellison is full of surprises. He and the Dvornaks were frat brothers at Harvard. Ugh, it makes me ashamed of my alma mater. You went to Harvard? Yeah, but I was only magna cum laude. That's Latin for I hacked test answers from my professor's computer. Any new info on the brother's background? Um, I'm still digging, but one thing's for sure, based on what you've heard, as soon as they get this check, they're out of here. Yeah, along with their diamonds. How do you figure they're going to smuggle a gazillion dollars worth of diamonds out the country? You're the criminals. You figure it out. Thank you all for coming today. We'd like to invite you all to eat, drink, and give till it hurts. Oh, loud and clear, but uh, Bloody Mary's blocking my view. Ah, uh, it's better. Uh, I did not order this. Spot any diamonds yet? No, but I think I know the butt who can sniff them out. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hello, Amy. Hi, Amy. We have a little surprise for you later, but uh, first we'd like to steal your doctor for a second. Sure. All right. Be right back. Dee Dee, if Amy gets in any danger, abort the mission. something that'll make you smile. Meet me in my office. There are audio and video signals coming from the building. Someone here is wired? Yes. And I know who. I can hear you.
Five million big ones. Do you want to celebrate? I would if your check were any more real in your accent. Mr. Bix suspected the cocktail waitress, had her followed, and guess who her friends are? My pants don't work with that top. They jammed the signal. Oh! Oh! Oh, yeah! <sighs> Truth be told, ladies and gentlemen, your contributions are the backbone to what we do to help kids like Amy have a better life. Amy, come on up here. Come on. Now, Amy, on behalf of all these generous people here, it's my pleasure to present you with a small token of our thanks for being our poster child. Leo? What Amy is about to receive is a brand new Easy Rider 2000 XP. The 2000 XP comes fully loaded with AM, FM, stereo, air conditioning, and a CD player. Look, oh, Petey, it's beautiful. Wow, it sure is. But? We have another surprise. Leo and I are personally sailing Amy to Puerto Vallarta right after this fundraiser so that she can start her new treatments that will allow her to get out of that chair forever. Jack, I know how they're gonna smuggle out the diamonds. Jack. You're free to go now. We'll take care of Amy from here, thanks. At least let me say goodbye. Look, I don't expect you to understand what I'm about to tell you, but I need you to try. Okay, Amy? Sure. You're in danger. These men want to hurt you. And the last thing I'm going to let you do is get on that boat with them. I need you to trust that I'm telling you the truth. I trust you more than anyone in the world, Dee Dee. Excuse me. Dr. Ellison would like a word with you in the office. It's about her transport. I'll be right back, sweetie. more than anyone in the world, Dee Dee. Get her out of here! Charity ripoff. If only Jack could hear Barbie and Ken's great news. Jack, are you out there? It's no use. Big jam the signal. And let's shut out the power. No power, no jam. Uh, is that a frozen chicken you're sitting on? What? Is that a frozen chicken you're sitting on? Oh, yeah, yeah, wait. <laughs> I know this one. Uh, yeah, and then the, the bartender, he says. Get up! Fine line between shorting out and electrocution. I hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> what is it, Jack? Always yapping a curfew. Lights out. Yeah! Uh, girls, where are you?
Is that frozen chicken you're sitting on? The little poster girl Amy is actually Leo and Micah's older sister, Amity Dvornak. And not only was she the hospital insider who killed Dr. Zerby, she's also the charity scam's mastermind. But she looks like she's 10. She's actually 37. She suffers from senescensibility, a rare aging disorder where the mind matures, but the body remains childlike. Well, the good news is when she gets out of prison, she'll only look 15. Shane, your teeth look so white. Thank you. Uh, Cassie, you actually have a tiny wad of spinach stuck between yours. That's weird. I haven't had spinach since Thursday. Don't you floss. Well, it's hard to find time with all these chases. It's important to find the time. It's critical to the prevention of gum disease. I've heard it can help prevent heart disease as well. That's amazing. How could flossing stop heart disease? Uh, girls, the bad guys, their yacht at the marina. Right. right. Your cargo manifest looks A-OK. -okay. You're good to go. I don't think so. Just who the hell are you people? We're ex-cons working for a clandestine group to take down lowlifes like you. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, you know, everyone always says that. Right before we kick you out. The stolen contraband is on the wheelchair! Uh-oh. You think Shane saw that? She saw it. is given, but given can take on so many forms, like pain, and even a lion sack like you knows it's always better to give than to receive. Did I happen to mention my other passion? Kickball. being a nurse, just being there to lend a helping hand, to give a comforting touch, and a smile that says, don't get well soon. Answer one question. A what? Did I really see you smack that woman back there? Yeah, so what? So now you have to pay.
know, young lady, you should be ashamed of yourself. Sitting around playing your pity act for the sake of the almighty dollar while real kids with real physical challenges are fighting for their very survival. Will you steal the money that could help them? Ask me, that makes you about the lowest form of life there is. Now walk over there and pick up those diamonds. Uh, Dee Dee, Amy really is disabled. Whoops. Sorry. So, Jack, you gonna send us back to prison? Oh, uh, not for another week or two. Mm, it looks like the bad guys won again. And they say crime doesn't pay. Who wants to grab a pizza? After serving a lengthy prison sentence, brothers Leo and Micah Dvornak were surgically attached at the hip and are currently touring state fairs across the country. After being cured of her rare illness and regaining use of her legs, Amy left the hospital and was promptly hit by a taxi. She is currently trying to re-regain the use of her legs. Having spurned Dee Dee's advances, Dr. Paul moved to Paris where he became a runway model. He now goes under the name Starfun. The song, Evil Doctor, is currently number three in Japan. All royalties are donated to the Dr. Zerbi Fund for young evil doctors. Following the chase scene, Mr. Ralph Arcasian picked up his dry cleaning and returned to video. He is currently available for future chase scenes.